Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you this morning. I'm a little out of my comfort zone because I'm usually talking about charts and numbers and I'm one of those people who thinks research is not only fun but creative. Um, but what I am going to talk to you about this morning is about the research function and um, uh, how research is perceived within organizations and why it's important. This, um, the information that I'm going to share with you today it comes from a, a panel session that we had at uh, TTRA this summer. Um, the um, theme for TTRA this year was relevant, so we talked about making research um, relevant. And um, as was said, I've been doing this type of on the supplier side of research for over 20 years. And over the course um, of those years, I've noticed that there's basically a continuum of how research is perceived within an organization and um, how it functions within an organization. And it, it can be on one end of the spectrum is very much like a help desk where um, uh, people within the organization come to whoever is housing the data. And in some cases, that's even a DP person um, or an IT person. And all they want is a piece of information that they, so they, they need to support something they're doing or they need to respond to a media question. And they just need a quick piece of data. And then it goes all the way to the other end of the spectrum where the research function and the researchers have a seat at the table. They're part of the management decision, decision making process. Um, and as an interested party in research, that's where we want to push everyone to. We want everybody to be um, the expert and to, to be able to take advantage of all the information that they have and, um, and get that to the people within their organization and help make uh, strategic decisions. Now what we did is we um, created a panel of people that we thought um, were doing this within their organization. So our panel was um, Dudley Jackson, some of you may know Dudley, from South uh, Carolina Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. Chris Cam um, from Hawaii Visitors and Conventions uh, Board. And Wendy Keel from Los Angeles. And uh, Dan Michelle from Visit California. Now what we did is we got together as a group and um, um, asked them what they thought were the most important um, issues around getting a seat at the table. And we came up with four, four topics. Uh, making the research relevant, deciding which, uh, which types of research to do if they needed to, to do it, um, or metrics and reports to generate, and elevating the presence and use of research in top management decisions, and communicating that research to top management. Um, so, so we started the morning, it was a morning session, and we were all gun ho and, and everybody was going to, the idea was each person would introduce a topic and we would have audience participation. Uh, well, the first person was Dudley, and Dudley did his thing very nicely, got our audience, we wanted our audience participation, it was dead silence. Um, but after we got going and we got a few uh, questions going, it really turned into an hour and a half of just really great information. So what I'm going to share with you is some of the, the, um, the highlights of that panel discussion. Probably one of the most important um, um, things to come out of, of the discussions was that research needs to have a perspective similar to the top management. They need to be able to look at the situation and think outside of the research box, if you will, to um, look at how their, their insights um, can be used and should be used and presented to, the, um, to achieve the organization's goals. Uh, in essence, I'd need to look at this picture. Anybody who has seen me present before, I show this, I like this picture. Um, so they need to be able to see the hag and the beautiful girl. Does everybody see both of them? Everybody's probably seen this picture a hundred times. 
Um, so, so the goal is to make research meaningful, actionable, understandable, and viral. Now, to make it to to um, make it um, relevant and meaningful, um, there, is, there it has two components. One is having research that's relevant to the situation. Um, do you have data that addresses whatever the current issue or topic is? Um, and if you don't have it, to be honest, that you don't, because all researchers, we don't want to say no. We don't ever want to say no. We don't have anything to support uh, what you're asking us. Um, but the point here was that you gain credibility by being honest with the people who you're trying to help. And then uh, the second component to that is that the research needs to be um, relevant to the person, the person who the end user needs to view that research as re relevant. And if they don't, even if it is the right research, it could be the right research for the situation. But if they don't view it as such, they're not going to use it, and they're not going um, to believe it. And probably what, it, what um, makes research the most relevant to the most people within an organization to top management is that it's actionable. Now, what constitutes actionable research? This was a long discussion and a, a lot of back and forth about what constitutes actionable research. And the, um, the answer that everyone could agree on was, it depends. <laughs> and it depends on your stakeholders, which may be members. If you're a membership organization, it could be executives, sponsors, partners, the media, uh, policy makers. Uh, it 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 um, it need it depends on who you, who you are addressing or who you're trying to influence, and it also depends on on the measurements your success measurements um, of your marketing and sales initiatives and uh, and on your long term planning. Now we came up with four different types of research. I tend to think that there's two overarching types. Uh, for organizations, and I call and I say that there's research to show and research to know. And research to know is is for your own internal purposes. You don't want to share it. You might want to be measuring your own internal performance. You might whatever you're measuring. Not all research has to be shared with everyone. That's a big lesson to learn. Not all research has to be shared. A lot of it can be for your own use, for your own. Uh, evaluation. And then research to show is obviously the research that you want to tell everyone how, how great and wonderful everything you're doing is. So, so we broke it down into four types of research. One are profiles of key, um, key market segments, and these might be your domestic travelers, your international travelers, maybe culinary, extreme sports, golf, whatever that might be. And you're probably all familiar with, with Profiles, you probably have a million of them sitting in your offices. Then there's research to explore and generate new insights. And this research might be research that's to know and not always to show. Um, because this type of research might be um, um, awareness studies or, or um, image studies or something like that. Then there's drivers of business results. And this is data that's kind of available, you know, like maybe it's employment or hotel occupancy or, or uh, data like that. And then there's, there's data such as visitor volume and visitor, visitor spending, which just kind of tracks your performance over time. Then we talked about communication. And you have all this great data. And and it's communicating it. And, and researchers, a lot of times, tend to talk in researchees and um, have a difficult time communicating uh, research. But what we wanted to, um, or what we got out of this, was that there's some real important reasons for why research is so important within an organization. Um, and and uh, it provides a base 
for objective decision making. If you've made a decision that you can go back and say, well, the research informed us, and this is why we moved in this direction, was based on research, you've, you, have, um, you have some logic for why you made the, made the decisions that you made. It also allows for program adjustment midstream. So if you had some dynamite new campaign, um, and you were trying something totally new in this campaign, and pieces of it weren't quite working, if you were measuring this as you would go along, you would know this as you were going. And um, by being able to make changes before you did all of your ad placements, you would be able to maximize your returns. Um, and it's a credible method of, re of reporting to, to stakeholders. Again, you have information to back up what you're doing. And it provides a level of accountability if something should thwart your program. I think this must have actually happened to someone, that they had a very good program and, and something happened, a natural disaster most likely, um, that their, their program could have brought, brought, it may have brought lots of visitors to their, to their destination, um, but because of some natural disaster, that didn't happen. Didn't mean their program wasn't good. Their program could have been excellent. Um, but, um, um, and, and they would have the, the measurements to support that. Now, one of our, our um, panel members, uh, Dan from California, he, he offered to share what their typical research process is. And, um, and the point here was that communication should be factored in to the entire process. So in California, what they do when a question arises, um, they, they form a work team and they design um, research objectively as they can uh, to, to address whatever the question or the situation is. Then they conduct the research and they go back into a working team then. And the working team is not just researchers, it's also, it's also folks from um, whatever group may have this burning question. And they formulate together, they formulate the insights. Now the, the reason for doing this is that if they're all on the same page, the idea is that they can pull, the, pull management along with them. So, so then this group um, presents their insights to management. And then manu management evaluates the insights um, through, through the corporate lens. Um, how, will, how will industry react to it? How will the media? How will policymakers? And then together, they work on the messaging. Now, Dan pointed out this is very nice linear process, but Steps six and seven are extremely, extremely difficult. If any of you have sat in meetings like this, um, when you're trying to, to negotiate with research about what you can say and what you can't say based on your research, you know these meetings can get very difficult. And, um, and that was Dan's point, is that this while they really try to adhere to this, steps six and seven are, are very difficult steps. And then finally, um, make your research viral. If you, if you are a research professional within an organization, let people know that you've got this information. Push information that might, might be meaningful to them out to them. And for, the, for the, the folks who get that information, you would probably really appreciate having some stuff interesting pushed out to you. Um, but ask your researchers. Ask them if they have this uh, or if they can produce certain things. We were talking about big data a little while ago. If they have access to some of this big data, um, you know, they can put together some, some interesting reports for you. And then finally, um, everyone agreed, uh, the audience and the panelists, that research should be about bettering your organization. Thank you.